ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Next time you're in the drugstore, look for the Horlick name at the fountain. When you see it, you can be sure that that druggist believes in giving his customers the best of everything. Its presence there shows him to be a good judge of quality and serves as an indication of his high standard of selection, not only of malted milk, but of all drugs and cosmetics he sells. He knows that for quality, for real wholesome nourishment, for results, no cheap imitation compares with Horlicks, the original malted milk. So next time you're in your drugstore, remember to look for the Horlick name at the fountain. If you don't see it, ask your druggist to get Horlicks for you in the interests of your own and your family's health. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Yesterday, just as Lum and Abner were confident that Squire Skimp had beaten them out of $200 on that fake diamond deal, Squire came in the store and gave them $300 for the diamond back. Well, they can't seem to figure out this sudden burst of generosity on the part of the Squire. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at their Jotham Down store making final plans for remodeling the store. Listen. Well, now, here's the figures that Esri gave me this morning. Yeah. New counters and shelving, putting in the show windows, remodeling the front of the store, putting an addition on the feed room, and painting the inside and outside both all comes to uh, $400. $400, huh? Yeah, of course, that ain't including the basket system. He says he figures that'll run about $300 by itself. Just for the basket system? Yeah, that's for the balcony and everything. Well, couldn't we get along without the balcony and all? Looks like to me we've got plenty of room in here without one of them. Oh, where are you going to run the baskets to? Well, I don't know. I don't know nothing about them things. Why, you saw them in there at Mina. All them department stores have got them. Why, well, yeah, I saw them, but I can't see what we need them for. Well, if we're going to have an up-to-date store here, we're going to have to have all them new fang approved men. People folk will be coming in here buying stuff just to see them baskets run along them wires. I know I did that. Well, what do we have to have the balcony for? Why don't we just run them back there in the feed room and rock the stuff up back there and send it back? No, no, that wouldn't look right. It's got to go upstairs. Get to running them baskets down low that way, somebody get their head knocked off. Yeah, it just sounds sort of foolish to me. What you used to send all that stuff up to the balcony and then go climb the stairs and rock it up and... All you'd have had to do in the first place is just hand it to him. Oh, we won't have to go up there and rock stuff up. Grandpap will stay up there all the time, tend to that. Well, that's just that much more expensive. Well, it'll cost money, all right, but it'll be the talk of the town. Yeah, but, Lom, we ain't going to have enough money to do all them things. We buy them wax women to put them dresses on for the show windows and get that water cooler and cash register. Why, we ain't going to have no money left to buy merchandise with you want to have a brand new store here with a batch of empty shells in it. Danny, that's right. I'd forgot about how low our stock's getting. Another thing, I don't believe we need Grandpappy Spears no longer. He ain't earning his salt around here. Why, he's delivering the groceries, opening up and sweeping out of the morning. Why, yeah, but coming. one of us just as well to be doing that. Well, we ain't got enough business here to keep one man busy, much less three of us. Yeah, things have been uncommonly quiet for some reason or other, just here late. Might be on account of our stock being so low. Well, why don't you just tell Grandpa that we'll have to let him go till things sort of pick up a little? Oh, I don't know. I've been laying off to do it for a week, but just can't bring myself to tell him. You know how mad he gets. He sort of tells you about things like that. I know he'd just fly right off in the handle. Well, I'll tell him. Law me, it ain't no use to keep him if we don't need him. Well, I wish you would. But put it in a nice way, Abner. We don't want to hurt his feelings. Well, yeah, Pretty hard to figure out a nice way to find about it, old honey. It looks to me like he could see he ain't needed around here and just step and quit. Well, now, he won't do that long as we pay him while he'll stay right here. I'll just tell him we don't need him no longer. Can't afford to pay him. But if he wants to work for nothing, why, it's all right with us. Yeah, that's the thing to tell him. 
He's been so nice, I just hate to let him go. Well, I do know that comes Dick Hardison. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, he sold up while ago and said he had some mail for us. Said he'd bring it over. Hey, did you tell him about Squire giving us our money back? Yeah, he was tickled from to death. Why? It, sort of like I am, though. I still don't understand how come Squire to do it. Uh, well, howdy, Dick. Yeah, hello, Dick. Well, how are you fellas today? Oh, all right, I reckon. <laughs> it's mighty thoughty of you to bring them letters over for Oh, us. that's all right, Mom. I'll come by here anyway. Here. Yeah, much obliged. Hey, what do you know about old Squire giving us three hundred dollars for that imitate diamond? Well, I didn't know what to think about that, Abner. Don't sound like Squire to me. Must be some trick to it someplace. Well, I don't know. He's got the money, three hundred dollars in cash. <laughs> so that he can pull all them kind of tricks on us, he wants to. <laughs> well, I can't figure it out. I never knew Squire to give anybody anything before, but. Maybe he's had a change of heart here all of a sudden. Can't tell. Well, then he's, this is that catalog ordered from them store fixtures. I thought. Store fixtures. Showcases and stuff like that. Oh. Here's yeah. some wax models in here. <laughs> then he's, them look like real women folks, don't they? I see. You going to get some models, Lump? Yeah, I thought we'd get a half a dozen or so of them. Sort of stand them around the store here. Put some of them in the show windows. It looks like we've got a big crowd in here to get all them standing around. <laughs> Folks will be passing by and think there's a sale going on in here. Well, for the land sake, look at that now. <laughs> What's the matter with her? Well, that's what I'd like to know. Look at the way she's standing there. What she's got her hand stuck out that way for her. Looks like she's holding out her hand to see if it's raining or something. <laughs> yes, she is. Oh, that's to hang pocketbooks and stuff like that on. Granny, she ain't a bad looker, is she? No, let's get her on. Hey, look at this in here, though. If you want to see something, look here, Dick. Maybe she'd run the customers off. <laughs> Looks like a hank. Well, that's some of that modernistic stuff. <laughs> that's the lady thing, you know. Might be the lady thing, but I don't want to have that thing sitting around the store here looking at it all day long. Oh, well, here, let me look at it a while, long, and I'll, I'll mark the ones I like in there. Yeah, I want to read this letter here. Looks like it might be something important. Wrote with a typewriter. Well, fellas, I've got to get on back. I want to go by Grandma Matthews. She's got a letter here from her boy in the Navy, and I know she'll be anxious to hear from him. Oh, from Wilbur, huh? Yeah, and he don't write very often either. If he knew how happy it made her to get a hearing from him, why, he'd write her every week. Yeah, I know. She talks about him all the time. Well, I never take a letter over there but what she wants me to sit down right there and read it to her. Yeah. And she'll sit there with big tears running down her cheeks. Calls him baby all the time. Oh, yeah. He ain't never growed up to her. No, no. Still worries and frets over him just like he was a young. Why, sure. Well, I'll see you fellas later then. Come down and look with me. Yeah, we will, Dick. And much obliged for fetching over the letters. Yeah, come back again, Dick. I reckon who this could be from. I don't know nobody from Denver, Colorado that I know of. Denver? Yeah. Uh, I thought your Uncle Lige Jetters went out there to look for a silver mine a long time ago. I granny, that's right, he did. I, I'd forgot about uh, that. sure. Yeah, he was sort of the black sheep. Well, that's just about who that's from. Well, he must have struck it rich then, for this is wrote with a typewriter. Oh. Yes, sir, I'll bound you that's who it is. <laughs> he was my favorite uncle, Uncle Lige was. He was? Yeah, I hope he found a silver mine. Wouldn't that be fine now? Well, go <laughs> ahead and open it up. You can't tell nothing but looking at the hand bell affair. Yeah, more than likely wanting to give me a half interest in the mine to come out there and run it for him about what he wants. Reckon you could look after the store here by yourself. Well, then he, this is from a whole batch of folks. Well, uh, maybe the whole family wrote you, now. Well, maybe this is a board of directors. Well, read it and see who it is. Well, yeah, it's uh, sort of blurred here. Must have used a carving paper on it. it says, uh, dear friend. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody knows me all right. Yeah, yeah. This charm was started in the hopes of bringing prosperity to me. Yeah. Within three days, make five copies of this letter, leaving off the top name and address and adding your name and address at the bottom of the list and give it to five of your friends. Now, what are they talking about here? Well, that don't sound like no silver mine to me. No. In omitting the top name and address, be sure and send that person a dime ten cents. Oh, a dime ten cents. Wrapped in paper as a charity donation. Wow. In turn, as your name leaves the top, you should receive 15,625 letters Ooh, with, with donations amounting to $1,562.50. Well, 
Well, uh, what kind of business is that your Uncle Lige has got himself into anyway? Now? I don't know. I can't make no sense out of it. Sound to me like he wanted you to send him a dime out. Here's a whole batch of names. D.E. Wilson, Denver, Colorado. And L.E. Graham, Denver, Colorado. Wow. C.V. Oldham, Denver, Colorado. And, uh, again, they're all from Denver. Well, and uh, they all want you to send them a dime? Well, you want to hear some grand type of spirit. Don't say nothing to him about this letter, Abner. I've got to figure this thing out somewhere. Yeah, I'd like to up. find out more about that myself. Yeah, don't let on. Maybe he'll leave directly. Well, I'll just buy him right now. That'll get him out of here. Now, do it as nice as you can. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm going to be nice about it, sure. Now, sir, I just seen Squire Skimp a minute ago, and I never have seen a feller so mad in my life. Well, uh, sit down here, Grandpap. I want to talk to you. What's Squire mad about? Why, well, mad about that diamond you feller sold him for $300 yesterday. Mad about it? Well... Yes, he's awful to up. He's down to the barbershop just uh, talking about it. Well, I do know. Well, it was his own proposition. We never tried to sell it to him. He come over here and said he felt bad about the way he'd been treating us and wanted to do the right thing about it. That's just what he said. Well, he says he's going to try to make you fellas give him that money back. Give it back? Yeah. Uh, I, I may as well tell you fellas now, <laughs> I don't want you to think I was buttoning into your business, but... Uh, Lum, you know when you give me the diamond to take it into the county seat and have it set in a ring for you so you could give it to Evelina? Yeah. Well, the gentleman says it weren't nothing but a piece of glass, but I come back and told Squire I had examined, and the gentleman said it was worth $1,200, and Squire believed it. Well, what do you want his money back for then? Well, uh, he taken it in there to try to sell it today, and the gentleman told him just what he told me, that it weren't nothing but a piece of glass. Well... <laughs> All right, Granny's, I see through the whole thing now. That's the reason he come over here and give us $300 for it, kid. <laughs> Grandpap, you've got a job here in this store just as long as you want it. I, Granny's, anybody can get ahead of Squire Skimp. Yes, anybody that can get the best of Squire Skimp will be a valuable asset to Lum and Abner. Did you know that Horlick's malted milk is fine for building convalescents back to health again? For giving them strength and weight? Listen to what Miss Viola Luckabill of South Mount, North Carolina, says in a recent letter. Quote, I want to tell you what Horlick's malted milk did for an aunt of mine. She is 69 years old and has been in bad health for six or eight years. For the past 12 weeks, she's been down in bed. She didn't have any appetite, couldn't eat any solid foods, until her son bought her a bottle of Horlick's malted milk. It gave her a splendid appetite. She can eat most anything and is so much better. It's no wonder she praises Horlick's malted milk so very highly. Unquote. That's the kind of letters we get all the time, folks. And that's why I suggest that you get a package of Horlick's to use and keep handy for similar emergencies. You can get it at your druggist's in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick who now bid you all good night and good night.